All right, my people, here's the word for the day. I am, you know, I find myself just, I hate to use the word lost, but getting lost in, um, in memories, thinking back to my foundation, thinking back to, you know, when the Lord first saved me. And I remember I, I said what was really a foolish prayer, but I know it was ignorance. But on um, August the 19th, 2001, I crawled up the middle of the church and I collapsed and my, and my prayer was, Lord, if, if this is all my life can be, just kill me right now. But if you give me the strength to stand up, you won't be able to hide from me. I'll chase you with everything inside of me. That's not the foolish prayer. The next day I, I went to work and I was, I was reading my Bible. And I remember I, um, I come across Psalms 40. And it says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the mud and the mire clay and set my feet on a solid rock and directed my path and put a new song of praise in my mouth. And that just was bursting with life to me. And I remember I was sitting in my truck before work and I said, Lord, if you could use somebody like me, a screw up that was no good to anybody, just a broken individual. If you could use somebody like me, that really proved that you was God. Like God needed proof that he was God. <clears throat> but that day... Um, long story short, I ended up meeting uh, a lady that had lost her son. Um, I would went by the uh, the cemetery because my Aunt Pam had passed away just recently before that. And I would went by the cemetery, just the urging of the Holy Spirit, didn't know that's what it was. Met this lady, comforted her, didn't know the right things to say, spoke with her and, uh, you know, and gave her my number, said, if I can ever do anything for you, now I'm giving you the abbreviated story. Um, six months later, she called and said, hey, I just, you know, the Lord told me to call you and tell you, thank you, and to let you know that I was going home to kill myself that day because I'd lost everything in the world. And immediately, the Holy Spirit brought it back to my memory, that foolish prayer that I'd prayed that morning. If I could use, if you could use somebody like me, that would prove that you as God. God's not going to punish you for trying to serve him and be obedient. I'm here to tell you, we might not do, and I'm doing the air quotes, do things the right way, but if your heart is pure and you're seeking God, he's going to bless the works of your hands. So I was thinking about um, about that, thinking about what I could share today, because I don't want to just come on here and just say something. I mean, I want you to be encouraged, and I want you to have, you know, faith food, faith, found, you know, firm foundations to, to build upon and stand on, and and I got to thinking about, you know, my life then at that time. Um, and I got to think about Jeremiah 29, 11, which is very common. Um, 11 and I think it's through 13 or halfway through 13. But I'm going to read it. It says, uh, let me see what version this is. This is the English Standard Version. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for peace and not for evil to give you a future and a hope, then you will call upon me, come and pray to me, and I will hear you. He heard me that day. You will seek me and find me, and when you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I got to thinking about, you know, people say, well, the, the Bible doesn't really, you know, relate to life today. But I told you my prayer, and I was praying from my heart. I wasn't trying to be, you know, some, you know, spirit of false righteousness. I didn't even know what that was. I just knew that I'd got saved the day before and that my life was different and that God was real. It wasn't just some story I'd heard about. And I came across 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, starting in verse 26. And Paul says, For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to the worldly standards. That was me. And I was trash compared to the world's standards. All right? Not many were powerful. Not many were noble of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. He chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. I could say God chose Kent. Some of you could fill in your name. God chose blank, your name. Things that are not, he, he say the things that are low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus. That's your identity, right? Who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness, 
sanctification, redemption. You are the righteousness of God in Christ, in Christ, right? So he became the wisdom from the throne room. He became your identity. He sanctified you and the redemption from sins, right? And that way, he said, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And, and we look at that on a, a topical level and we think about boasting and whatnot. God can use and wants to use every single breathing person that's ever been on this earth and is ever going to be on this earth because you are children of God. And like it said in Jeremiah 29, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for peace, plans to prosper you, plans to carry out that thing that I put inside of you to accomplish in your life for others. Amen. So here we are right here is don't look at yourself as what can I do? Who am I? You know, I wasn't born into this family and I don't have, you know, this ability and I'm not a, a good speaker or I don't know the right words. The Holy Spirit said, I just need you to go. That's what Isaiah, when he saw the vision of the throne and he heard the Lord say, who shall we send? Man, he was bursting out of his skin saying, send me, I'll go for you. And if you go, then he'll make the way. He said, you just step out and you seek me with all your heart and you'll find me because you'll never be alone. Amen. So never look down on yourself. And that way you never boast on yourself, but you boast on the Lord because it's the Lord that gives us strength. It's the Lord that empowers you. That is your wisdom. The, the planning, everything that rises up inside of you comes straight from the mouth of the Father through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. He wells up inside of you. And then you are a city on a hill that can't be hid. So get secure in your identity. Get secure in knowing that you are bought with a price and you are worth everything in the universe to God because he paid everything in the universe for you. He sent Jesus to die for you because you have purpose. Amen. So I love you. Get it. Charge, charge, charge. Let's go take this world for the kingdom. I love you guys.